I'd like to introduce our 23rd head coach in NIU football history, Thomas Hammock. Must be, it must be something important about to happen here over the next couple of weeks. Um, we're certainly excited to be here. Uh, NIU football is uh, a program that I, I'm very, very passionate about. Uh, just want to take a minute to thank Donna and Joe uh, for their relentless work and um, everything they do for NIU football. I think that's uh, been outstanding. Obviously, I'm, I'm proud of our players that we have here today. Um, the work these guys have done this summer has been outstanding. Uh, coach Napoli, our strength and conditioning coach, has uh, put them through a nice circuit uh, of things. And, and uh, the leadership qualities that I saw start to develop uh, with our players is, is, is one that, that, that makes me happy and excited. Uh, you know, we had a walkthrough last week, and the energy and the tempo uh, of the guys in the, in the room were, were um, uh, something that was just you can't explain. I mean, they, they were there, uh, and they felt it. You know, obviously, this is the 150th season. Uh, for college football, uh, we're certainly excited about that. Uh, excited about um, our schedule this season. I know a lot of people uh, seem to think it's, it's difficult, uh, but the one thing about you know any given uh, Saturday or Tuesday or Wednesday or wh whenever they want us to play, uh, anybody else, any, anybody can win any day. Um, obviously, I just want to take a minute and, and kind of talk uh, about our roster, uh, how I see things. Um, the one thing about our program is we look at our program and we want to build our program from inside out. So I'm going to talk about our offensive of linemen first, and then we'll, we'll work from there. Just up front, we got a group of guys. Um, Steck, Steck is here today. Uh, but we have a group of offensive of linemen um, that, that really work hard, smart players. I think they got the highest GPA on our team, uh, which is what you want up front, guys that don't make a whole lot of mistakes. They learn quick. Uh, but across the board, uh, we got C.J. Perez, Ben Olsen, Patton Steck, uh, Marcus Cox. Uh, we got a, a grad transfer, uh, Andrew Starr. Uh, we got Nate Velos. Um, so we feel like, uh, along with those guys, we've got some other guys, but we feel like we're going to have an opportunity to have eight to ten guys um, that we feel like we can go into a game with that can go out there and help us win. Uh, at the tight end position, uh, Brinkman is here today. Um, we feel good about him. We got Liam. We got Crawford, uh, Lurch. So we got, a, we got a group of tight ends that we feel like in our offense, uh, we want to make sure we put them in position to be successful. At the wide receiver position, Tears is a senior, uh, has played a lot of football. You know, we think that his best football is ahead of him. Uh, we got Dennis Robinson. Uh, we got Tyrese Ritchie. Uh, we got some freshmen that, that we feel can give us a, a nice uh, group of guys that we can have a rotation uh, to find the, the five or six best guys that we can go win with week to week. At the running back position, we got three guys that have some experience uh, with Trey Harbison and Marcus Jones and then Jordan Nettles. And also a guy that we really feel good about, Rob B, uh, from Rockford, is a, is a young uh, up-and-coming player, uh, had a great spring. We expect some big things out of him as well. And last but not certainly not least is the quarterbacks. I know everybody wants to hear about the quarterbacks. Uh, you know, we, we got some guys that's, that's in the program now and that's competing at an uh, extremely high level. And I think the one thing uh, we talk about with our program is building our program on competition. Uh, and so we got Marcus Childress, who's uh, won a MAC championship, has game experience. Um, we got Anthony Thompson, who's been in the program. We got Ross Bowles, who, who came this summer. Uh, and then we got a couple freshmen that will all be competing. But uh, as we all know, you want to make sure you get a number where two or three guys that can compete and, and we can make sure we get a thorough evaluation. Moving to the defensive side of the ball, you know, obviously on defense, I think uh, the strength of our defense is down the middle. So uh, we got three uh, interior defensive tackles that we feel great about, uh, with Heflin being one, Kramer and Ben Leroy. Two of those guys are here today. We also have some quality guys. Uh, behind them that we think can, you know, give us some quality reps uh, during our non-conference season to see um, the, the, the great thing they did with the NCAA, they allow freshmen to have a chance to play early. So I think we have some young guys that we can have a chance to see if they can play uh, and compete early. On the edge of our defense, we got two guys that have a lot of experience, Lorbeck and uh, Quinn, uh, Wynn, excuse me. And then we got some young developing guys that we feel like can give us some. Michael Kennedy is a guy that, that brings some speed to the edge. Uh, I think he, he brings some of the uh, same qualities as Sutton Smith. Um, 
And then Jawan Denton is also another guy that uh, is flexible, can bend, can move, uh, and do different things. So we're going to be very, very creative uh, of how we can try to get sacks for the quarterback. Uh, our linebackers are probably one of the stronger units on our, on our defense. Uh, we got three guys, three seniors uh, that's played a lot of football. Um, you know, the one thing that we've been working on uh, in the spring and in the summer is just being more disciplined, not giving up as many explosive plays on defense, which, is, which would be key. Uh, on the back end of our defense, down the middle, again, you, you look at the safety. We got Trey Sean, we got McKelty. Uh, you know, uh, when I took the job, Adam Burry said that the, the best unit on our team is our, uh, is our safeties. So I think we got a pretty healthy competition between the defensive line, the linebackers, and the safeties to figure out, you know, what's the best unit on our, on our defense. And then on, at the uh, cornerback spot, uh, we got some young developing talent uh, with McKelty, uh, Antoine, and uh, Haney. Uh, and also, we got a couple young guys that I think can give us a chance. We got uh, a young Romel Golston who, who's been looking great this summer, uh, along with uh, Justin Clark. So uh, I feel good about our roster. I feel good about the schedule. I feel good about the work the guys have put in. Uh, now, like I told my coaches, it's up to us on Thursday when we report to camp. Uh, now we got to start showing. So uh, for us, it's time. The time is now. And we're excited about the season. Questions. Any questions? Coach, uh, heading into Chicago, what do you have for your relationship to be with the city of Chicago at large and this little program? Well, I mean, I think uh, Chicago is very, very important. I think, um, number one, there's a lot of talent in this area that we want to cultivate um, for our team. Uh, the other thing that's important is, is to get people from the, the city of Chicago to, to come to our games. I think we have a lot of alumni in this area. Uh, it's important to, to get those those people back to our games and to support our student athletes who who work tremendously to to make sure they represent our university in a first class manner and and to make sure they represent themselves and their families in a first class manner on the football field as well. You came in and told the players every spot's basically up for grabs. You got to fight for this. What was the message you've been trying to send and kind of the early stamp you wanted to put on? Yeah, I think um, you know we want we talk about accountability. Uh, we talk about discipline. We talk about all the small details um, that go into winning. I mean, and, and to be honest, the, the, the one thing that we all understand is winning is, is very, very fragile. So we want to make sure we're disciplined off the field uh, so we can take that same discipline on the field. How about the punt kickers? You said it's a lot of people. How do you see that shape? Yeah, I think, you know, for us, I think we have some really, really athletic young players. And I think, um, you know, a lot of those guys have been, you know, catching punts this summer, uh, which is great, uh, on the jugs this summer. And, um, you know, that's one, one thing where you can, you can really make a difference uh, in a season if you have the right type of guy or the right type of player that can make things happen in the return game. So I'm excited about, you know, what I've seen in, in workouts, the way guys move, and then I think we'll have a great ability uh, to be very, very uh, dynamic in the return game. Coach, or with special teams, how much do you treat or tell the younger players that that's an aspect of the game that you can really make the mark? In? Yeah, that's an excellent question. I think, uh, you know, every young player makes their, makes their way and earns the respect of the veterans on special teams. Uh, and, I, and, and what guys are, guys that have NFL aspirations, you want to make the NFL, you better be a good special team player. And I can tell them firsthand what it's like. So we, we're going to put a heavy emphasis on special teams. Um, I made the practice schedules for practice. Uh, there are going to be days where we start practice with special teams uh, to, to emphasize how important uh, special teams are uh, to winning and losing. So it's a third of the game, and we want to make sure we, we put the right time and effort into special teams. Being around the program now for some months, how would you describe the expectations around NIU now, and maybe even compared to when you were there before? You know, I think uh, we got a group of players that expect to win which is great. You know, when I first went to NIU, we were trying to figure out ways of how to win. We were just building uh, the foundation. But we have players that expect to win. But most importantly, they go out and they work like winners. Um, you know, they, they, they go out and, 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 and work extremely hard day in and day out. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of guys that complain. They just go to work. They put their head in the sand. Uh, and I think that's going to help us uh, over the course of a season. You know, the season, 12 game season, hopefully more. Um, but for 12 games, every week is an individual week. And so, it, what I talk about is a season being 12 individual seasons. So, um, 
one week at a time. Sunday you hit the reset. And the way these guys have worked since we've been here, uh, I think is going to help us when we get to the season. Coach, when uh, going after players in the recruiting process in the Chicago area, what characteristics kind of make up those types of guys and what you're looking for? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, toughness is, is one thing that you can't coach. You can't coach a player to be tougher. Uh, so we look for those qualities um, that you can't coach, those, those intangible things, toughness, discipline, worth ethic. You know, all those things you get from this area uh, because that's what the high school coaches expect. So you go in some of these schools and you see guys are working out at 530 in the morning. That's something you can't coach. So they, they have that expectation, okay, I, I'm going to get up, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to work hard in the classroom. Uh, and then I'm going to practice later on that day. So uh, those type of, I think this is a great area for recruiting um, and, and for our program. And, and we make sure we put a lot, we got three coaches that work this area. So uh, it's very, very important to our program. Coach, what's an aspect about uh, this new position for you, the head coaching position that you didn't expect uh, to have to deal with going into the that's an excellent one aspect is being here today, um, but you know that that's part of it. Uh, you know um, the one thing about it is I, I really really enjoy um, coaching. I, I really really enjoy uh, NIU. Uh, it's a special place to me, and whatever they ask me to do, I'm, I'm willing to do to promote the program, uh, to make sure we're on the national stage. So uh, I think things are headed in the right direction. Now we just got to go out there and put the work in uh, to win some football games. You mentioned the quarterbacks from what you know about those guys already. What do you want to see from each of them kind of make the difference? Yeah, I think, you know, anytime you're talking about the quarterback position, uh, you're talking about the leader of your team. And I think uh, to take the leadership, uh, to earn the guys uh, in the locker room respect, I think that's something that um, we want to see. We want to see a guy command the offense. You know, I think a lot of times people see a bad play and just want to blame one person. Well, you know, as the quarterback, you have to take that, you have to bear that responsibility. Um, but you also have to coach guys, you have to coach the wide receivers to get to the right depth. Uh, can you do those things uh, and get through the different guys that come from different backgrounds? Um, so that's what we want to see this, this uh, fall camp, is who's going to take the, the bull by the horns uh, and, and, and make us an explosive and dynamic offense. Uh, and I think we got a, a, a few guys that can go out there and get it done. You mentioned the explosive dynamic. How, how different will the offense look this year versus what people have seen the last few years in your mind? You know, I think the one thing is going to be different. Um, you know, we're going to we're going to use different personnel. Uh, we're going to come out the huddle. Um, you know, we're going to have a lot of uh, eye candy, as you call it. You know, we're going to shift. We're going to motion. We're going to do different things to create matchups. Um, and I think that stuff is hard to defend. I think it's, you know, when you I think sometimes when people uh, play a certain style, not NIU, but in general, um, people can get used to, okay, three by one is three by one. Uh, well, three by one out of 12 personnel is, is a lot different than three by one out of 11 personnel. So um, we're going to make sure we utilize the, the talent on our team. I think we have some tight ends that are dyna dynamic. I think we have some wide receivers that can help us stretch the field uh, and all, you know, but it's got to marry. So the one thing, our run game is going to marry with our passing game and vice versa. Um, and we're not, you know, we're not looking to just run a bunch of plays that over and over and over. We want to be able to, you know, change the look for defense and, and create matchups. What's the biggest difference at NIU from the time you stepped foot on as a player to now? Probably the, the facilities. You know, I walk in and I see a nice indoor facility. Uh, these guys don't, don't, we, they don't, they don't know that building was never there. And we talked about uh, practicing indoors, and you look around, it, it meant I'm. We practice in the stadium. So all that wind and all that cold, or if it get too hot, we were all right on that turf. So uh, they just have to understand that the facility is one that they should, number one, have pride in. Uh, but it, it has been a big determining factor on how well this program has done uh, over the past few years. Coach, go back to quarterbacks. Are you looking for one guy, or if you guys show that they can be instrumental to the offense? Would you be open to using a few guys in game in different situations? You know, I think ideally you would like, like it to be one guy. Uh, I've been a part of some different situations where a guy said, you know, you can't keep him off the field. You know, at Minnesota we had uh, Marquise Gray who, who wound up playing and we had to use him. Last year with the Ravens we had Lamar Jackson. So 
Uh, if somebody shows that you can't keep them off the field, I would never say never. Uh, but going into it, we would like for one guy to establish himself uh, and for, for the rest of our team to follow. How have you seen uh, your quarterbacks grow from the start of this sort of competition in spring to now? I think it's been great. I mean, you can ask our players. Uh, they've been around them a lot more. Um, you know, we can't watch uh, the player workouts. Um, but I think from what I've, I've seen in the morning workouts, I've seen guys uh, taking a leadership role. I see got players following them. Uh, and it's, a, it's all been positive. Um, there has not been one negative moment that I've seen uh, from the competition as well. Because everybody's going through the same thing at every position. Guys are all competing. So uh, it's not like just the quarterbacks are the only two guys competing or only, only three guys competing. All, everybody in this room is competing for a spot and, and competing for time. So uh, it's been great. I think we've, we've become a better football team uh, because of it. Coach, how do you think your experience in the NFL will help you most on the college level? That's a good question. I think, you know, um, just being in the National Football League, you understand that it's, a, it's week to week. Um, so uh, one thing I learned is you got to play complimentary football. You look at our schedule. Uh, one week you may play a team with a strong defense. The next week you may play a team with a strong offense. Uh, but all we're trying to do is score one point in our, that uh, opponent. So um, week to week, you know, it may look different. We may have to slow it down and, and get it to the fourth quarter. Or well, we may have to speed it up and, and go, you know, tick for tack. So, uh, and that's what you understand being in the National Football League is every week you're just doing whatever it takes to win that game. Uh, and, and that's what, certainly what we'll do. And some days we're going to rely on our defense and, and play great defense. And some days it'll be special teams or offense. So uh, week to week. But we're going to do everything we can to win each, each and every game. What are the biggest adjustments from NFL? The biggest adjustment is probably the roster size. I mean, you, you get to it. You, it's funny. I remember my first year in the National Football League, we had 90, 90 guys, and then we cut to 53. And you look at the practice, and you say, how are we going to get through practice? So then, you know, I had this grand idea of things we did in Baltimore when I got to my first spring. Hey, we're going to be 15 yards on this side and this side. And we got to practice. And it, it's like 50 more guys than what you used to have. And so um, definitely the roster size is, is one. Um, that we're going to, you know, I, I've gotten adjusted to. Uh, and I think just the, the creativity that this four-game uh, schedule allows you is, is certain that, that I'm, I'm looking forward to. How can, how can we be creative to, to create depth uh, at different points of the season as guys develop? Coach, you've uh, talked about challenging the wide receivers to, you know, increase the production this year. Um, what ways have you kind of seen so far that any, give an indication that you're ready to see that production increase? Yeah, I mean, I, I shook Spencer Tears' hand a week ago because I was proud of the, the work he put, put in in the summer. I just think he's taken a step, uh, along with some other guys in that group, they've really taken a step of accountability. If, if you do something wrong, mistakes happen. Own it, okay, and prevent it from happening the next time. Uh, and that's what I saw from guys, guys taking accountability. Uh, and I, I think guys started correcting themselves, which allowed uh, – leadership qualities that start to develop. Uh, and, that's what I, and, and that's what the young guys are looking at. We got freshmen that's looking at these guys to say, how am I supposed to do this? Or how am I going to react to adversity? Because we all know adversity is going to strike at different points. Uh, but the way we handle it is going to determine how well we play this season. And, and what I've seen this summer, guys take big jumps uh, in their worth ethic, in their mentality, in their approach. And I'm excited about them. I, I mean. I, I can't explain how, how excited I am about the wide receivers. Coach, how long does it take you and your assistants to come into a program the first time to get used to the players? Does it take through fall? Does it take a couple games that you feel comfortable with what you got? You know, um, as far as them getting comfortable with me, you know, one thing about me, I am who I am. Uh, I'm not one of these guys that's, you know, I act the same here as I act in the building. I, I don't change. So I think I'm pretty e easily to get along with. And, uh, you know, if I'm going to say something, I'm going to tell you directly face to face. I've always been a face-to-face a -face guy. I know in this, this day and age of social media, I learn a lot more about our players on social media than I do standing right next to them. Um, but, but they understand that, you know, if I have something to say, I'll let them know. And um, so it, it's been smooth that way. I, I've let them know our expectations. I think the one thing 
uh, when you're in the spot, you know, I don't get to touch each individual player every single day because I'm not in the meeting rooms with them specifically. Um, so I try to make sure I do a great job over communicating uh, what we want, what we expect, uh, knowing that my assistant coaches are the ones that spend the day-to-day -day, uh, time with them. So they have obviously a, a, a more in-depth relationship than I do. Well, yeah, that's part of the job because it's like, hey, we're trying to find players, you know, and we're trying to, we want to promote NIU. I think uh, the one thing about it, NIU has been a great program. There should be no reason August 31st there shouldn't be a sold-out crowd. Uh, that's, what, that's my expectation, and we're going to go out there and, and, and make a lot of people uh, happy that they came to the game. We check soon, Coach. You got it? Oh, yeah. He's on the Hey, verified. <laughs> what, what, what's the key to getting that fan excitement? I mean, so you guys, are, you guys win a lot of back titles yeah. in a lot of big games, but haven't necessarily gotten the attendance bump. What, 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 what's a good take to You know, I think, I think uh, people have to understand winning is hard and don't take it for granted. Uh, and that's what we're going to stress. Um, I think, you know, recruiting this area and get more people engaged uh, in the community. Uh, and, and getting those people out, I think is good. I think, you know, I think our president is working on uh, increasing the enrollment, which I think will help as well. Uh, all those, all those factors is going to be uh, the sweet spot for us. But the one thing we can control is how we play and how we perform. Uh, and the more we win, the more people are going to get excited about NIU. Coach, one of the things that people are saying about the MAC this year is that, as opposed to years past, there isn't one clear-cut favorite. What do you think the CMAS do to separate themselves from the other 11 teams in the conference? I didn't hear the second part of that. What do uh, teams have to do to separate themselves from the other teams in the conference in order to, to play in Detroit this summer? Well, it's like anything. It's, it's health of your team, right? You want to be you want to be healthy in the later part of the, of the season. I haven't had uh, – when we report, I was going to talk to our team about the season, but, you know, the way I look at it, the last four games of the season, we play four division games. Uh, a lot of things are going to be determined in those, that last month of the season. And, uh, you know, you've got to play your best football at the end of the year. Uh, you win championships in November. So uh, we want to make sure we're we peaking at the right time and playing our best football uh, when it counts most. Coach, um, you talk a lot about uh, building the strengths of the program. Uh, heard that each position needs to embody the strengths of the program. So as far as the quarterback position goes, what do those guys who've seen snaps, what does each of them embody as far as the strengths? You want me to talk about their strengths as, as yeah. players? Um, individually? What, does, what do Ross Bowers, Marcus Childers, and, and Thompson have as, as individual strengths for each of them? Yeah. I think that's a tough question. Right, We still got 25 opportunities to go out and practice. Um, so I don't, I don't want to give you a, an assessment that, that part way through. That's not fair to anybody. Because what I've seen is some strength in the spring and some weaknesses maybe have, have, uh, have changed uh, based on what they did this summer. So uh, I, I say about the week of August 31st, I'll be ready to answer that question. Uh, but right now, I don't, I don't think that would be fair to our players. A lot of uh, NIU success quarterback-wise over the last 10 years has been with a dual threat quarterback. What, do you have a philosophy on that? Do you want to continue that? Do you worry about it? Yeah, I, I want the best player, whether he's dual threat or he can throw the, he can throw the ball and, 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 and get it to different spots. Uh, it's the best player. Um, and then you build your system around that. Uh, I think that's, that's where I think people make the mistake. They try to just, hey, this is our system. Go execute it. No, we're going we're gonna to find out who the good players, and then we're going to build our system around those players. So if we, if we have a quarterback that can uh, run the ball and he, and he wins the job, then we'll, we'll do quarter, more quarterback run game. It's, it's not hard to call. Uh, if we have a, a quarterback that can, that can spin the ball, we're going to throw more play action, we're going to take more shots. I mean, so we're going to play to the strength. I mean, that's what you asked me about the NFL. That's what the NFL teaches you. Last year, Baltimore Ravens, the first six games, we led the NFL in pass attempts. The last 10 games, we led the NFL in rush attempts. So we played to, the, to, to our player strengths. We had Joe Flacco. He got hurt. When he got hurt, we brought on Lamar Jackson, and we, went, we ran the ball like, with numbers that they haven't seen since like the 1950s. So I think we were averaging like 230 yards rushing a game. So you, you build it around the players. 
coach, you talk about Coach Harbaugh as a leader so much. Um, what has he taught you that you bring into the college program? Oh, he's he's uh, he's he's one of the best. Um, you know, you think back when you when you sit in this in this position, you think about okay, when I was an assistant, you know, how many mistakes did I make, uh, or how many things did I do wrong? Uh, and one thing about uh, Coach Harbaugh is he allows you to be who you are, whether it's coaches, it's players. Um, you know, I had a tendency; I was hot-headed at times, and he had patience to to help me develop uh, as a coach um, to say, hey, okay, maybe you need to see it from this perspective. Or maybe you know the way you think is not always the right the right thought, and so I text him last week uh, just saying I appreciate everything he's done for me uh, and help how he helped me develop, and a lot of things that I, I thought when I was an assistant, you know I didn't truly understand until you sit in the seat, and um, you know I got a group of coaches that got ten different personalities, and every day is a new day for somebody, and um, you have to make sure you manage those personalities. Uh, the right way. So he was just a great leader in that regard of allowing you to have the ability to be who you are, uh, along with you know reeling you in when he when he felt the need to. Kind of along those lines, one of your former teammates is in the second year leading the program in the Big Ten. So, what are your impressions on PJ's leadership style? Like you know, uh, one thing about P PJ is who he is. I mean, just because this is the first time uh, you you guys are seeing it. When we were freshmen walking in the program in 1999, he was the same person. So uh, I, I tell you what, he's got it rolling. So they beat Wisconsin for the first time in 15 years. You know, I was at Minnesota and we couldn't get it done. So I, 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 I had to go to Wisconsin, you know. But he obviously went up there and, and they got it done. And he, he's recruiting well. You know, obviously being close in close proximity, uh, you know, you see some of the guys that they're recruiting at, at, at his program. And he, he's done a great, I'm proud of him. He's an NIU alum. Uh, you know, he, he bleeds just like the, the rest of these people bleed uh, for NIU. And, and although he went to Western Michigan, it was an opportunity to become a head coach. So I'm proud of him. I'm happy for him. Uh, I've talked to him a couple times. We still have a great relationship. And, you know, anytime you go through a program, you're always going to be brothers. And that's what I try to explain to our players. No matter where you go or what your circumstance may be, we're going to always be brothers. So I'm, obviously I'm happy uh, because we came in 99. 99 class was a big part of why NIU is what it is now. I believe that. And uh, I'm just happy for everything he's doing. When he was a player, did you have seen him someday developing and having a coach like To a coach? Yeah, you know, the funny story is um, I was coaching – and he came with me to a convention to, uh, to become a coach. So I always saw it. Coach, what's your signature saying in practice that maybe gets a chuckle out of, out of the players the first time they hear it? And where did it come from? You have to ask. You know, I'm so like, uh, you know, spur of the moment. I don't, I, don't go, I, don't, I don't go through the same saying all the time. So you have to ask some of them. But I'm pretty... I'm pretty honest and direct, so I'm sure they got some good ones.